In this lesson, we will talk about data validation. I'm here with the program we created for the grades of the student. Let's talk about some problems that might occur in this program. Here there's no data validation. So even grades being from 0 to 10, I can type 100 by accident and the program is going to accept it. Another problem is that if I type a string, our program crashes, which is really bad. Let's see how we can do basic data validation using loops. Then, in the next lesson, we will keep our program from crashing by doing error handling. So before asking for user input, I'm going to create a variable called data valid. And I'm going to assign to it a value of false. So let's start a loop like this while data valid equals false. So now this test is going to return true because data valid is equal to false. So we are going to go inside this loop. Then we're going to ask for the grade. And now we're going to make the validation. So if grade one is less than zero or grade one is greater than 10, then we're going to do something. So now we are using the OR operator. And like I told you, if one of the tests results true, the whole test is going to result true. So if this happens, it's because we have an invalid input. In this case, we're going to print grade should be between 0 and 10. And then we're just going to continue in this loop. So the continue will jump out of the loop and start it again. Then we complete with an else statement because if this is not true, it means that we have valid input. So in this case, what we're going to do is make data valid equals true. And when we do it, we're going to end the loop. And when it tries to run again, this test is going to return in false. So it's not going to go inside the loop and it's going to continue with our program. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for grade two. So let's copy all this. We're going to have to set the value of data valid to false again. So this is grade two and grade two. Now, before we continue, let's test if this is working. So let's try minus 10. So it doesn't work. It says grade should be between 0 and 10. Let me try 11. It doesn't let us. So now our program only accepts number between 0 and 10. So let's try 8. And now it's asking for the grade of the second test. I'm going to try again. So minus 10. So it doesn't let us. All right, let's continue. For the absences in total classes, let's do something similar, but let's change the order and ask for the total classes first. So let's copy this structure here. Let's ask for the total number of classes and then the tests we're going to do It's just going to be if total classes are less than zero because we can't have a negative number here, but we won't put any limitation for the number of classes. Actually, this is going to be a bit different because we can't have zero classes. We can have a grade zero, but we can't have zero classes. So this is going to be less than or equal to. In this case, we're going to tell the user 
The number of classes can't be zero or less. Now let's do the same thing for the absences. Now we won't accept absences less than zero. We can accept zero, so let's put it like this. And we can't accept a number of absences greater than the total classes. So let's do absences greater than total classes. In this case, we're going to print the number of absences can't be less than zero or greater than the number of total classes. All right, now let's run it and see what happens. So we just tested the grades, but let's do it again. So it doesn't accept. So let's try eight and eight. Now the number of classes, let's try minus five and it doesn't accept it. So let's put it 20 and something went wrong here. So here's what happened. I forgot to set the data valid to false again. So we never enter this loop. And when we try to do the calculations, this variable didn't exist because we never entered here. So now this should be working. That's why it's always good to test our program. So let's try again, eight, eight, 20. And now let's try a negative number and the validation is working fine. And now let's try 25. And again, we can't type a number greater than the total number of classes. So let's try five. And now our program continues and outputs the result. This is much better but our program still crashes if we type in a string. So in the next lesson, we are going to do some error handling. I'll see you then. In this lesson, we will learn how to do error handling in Python. Every time we work with user input, we should make sure not only the data is valid and within the range we want, which is what we did in the previous lesson, but also we need to make sure a bad input is not going to cause our program to crash. In order to do that, we are going to use the try and accept statements. So let's understand why our program crashed. Let's create a new variable called number and let's assign a user input converted to float. Now let's type a string and this results in an error because Python can't convert this value into a string. So in order to deal with this, we're going to use try and accept statements. So let's go to our program. Let's just copy this. And instead of converting it to float immediately, let's just get the input first. And now we are going to start a try block. As we can see, this works the same way as the conditional structures and loops. We just use the column and now we have this indentation and everything aligned here is going to be inside this try block. So what we're gonna do here is trying to make the conversion. If we get to the next line, it means that we were able to do this without any problem. So we can just print the number is number. If we see this message, it means that we made the conversion without any problem. Now comes the best part. If we have any errors inside the try block, instead of crashing, we are just going to jump to the accept block. So here we can handle the error. 
In this case, we are just going to print invalid number. So let's run this and see what happens. First, let's try a valid number, so 20, and we can see it made a conversion to float and it printed that message, the number is 20. Now, let's try an invalid number. I'll try that string. And now instead of crashing, we just printed a message. And we could have done anything we wanted here inside the accept block. So this is how we do error handling in Python. This was all for this lesson. I'll see you in the next video. Hello, it's time to exercise what we just learned about error handling. Apply the try and accept statements to our student grades program and keep it from crashing. That's it, good luck and when you're finished, come back here to see the solution. So like we did in the previous lesson, we're not going to convert it to float immediately. Let's get the input first, and now let's try to convert it to float. If we can make the conversion, we don't need to do anything else. We just need to continue running the rest of the code inside the while loop. But if we can't make the conversion, so accept, we're gonna print a message. Invalid input, only numbers are accepted. Decimals should be separated with a dot. This is in case someone tries to input a number and use comma to separate decimals. Now there's something really important to do here, because if we finish here, we are not going to make the conversion and we will get to this point with a string and our program will still crash. So here's what we have to do inside the accept statement. We're going to print that message and we are going to jump out of this loop with a continue statement. So basically we have two validations here. First, we validate if this is a valid number, and then we validate if this number is within the range we want, which in this case is between zero and 10. Now let's do the same thing for grade two. Don't forget to correct the indentation when you do it, otherwise this is not going to run. So here it's going to be grade two. And we are not making the conversion here. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the total number of classes. This time we don't have to say anything about decimals because we're asking for a number of classes. And now the same thing for the absences. Okay, let's see if this is working. So let's start with negative numbers and a number higher than 10. So our program didn't accept it. And now let's try to input a string. And our program doesn't crash anymore. So we are stuck here until we input a valid number, which is exactly what we wanted. 
So let's try 9. And now it's asking for the grade of the second test. Let's make the same tests. This is working. This is also working. Now let's try the string. Okay, so our validation is working. Now the same thing for the total number of classes. So a negative number. Let's try a string. And this is also working. So let's try this time 10 classes. So for the number of absences, let's try a negative number. Let's try a string. And let's also try a number higher than the total number of classes, so 11. So we can see that our data validation is working. So let's try 2. And now our program finished without any problem, and it will never go into crash because of bad user input. So there you have the solution for this exercise. If you have any questions, just leave it in the Q&A section. I'll see you in the next video.